All right, guys, it's Tuesday night. We're going to log on. Let's get our esthetician chat. We're going to have some real talk today about do you, is it time for you to go solo? And when you know it's time to go solo. My next boot camp starts April 1st. So if you guys are looking for a seven minute Brazilian training, it is up and we're ready to go. Oh, hello, hello, hello. I have this bright light behind me. I'm in the living room, of course, but we're going to have a great time tonight. So let me do a little bit of homework. Our skincare mastermind early bird pricing is still up. That starts June 1st. Boot camp starts April 1st, or if you want to wait till May 1st to do it. Just got back from Chicago today. I got a lot of nice pulls. I got a lot of nice stuff at the show. Um, you know, it's you know, you kind of made it when the Revita Lash Rep comes up and gives you stuff and you don't pay for it. I mean, she gave me all of this stuff. Um, the mascara. What else did I get? I got the brow. Um, she gave me the eyelash conditioner. Like, just came up to the booth and like, here you go, love. I was like, oh, oh gifts. So I'll be trying that. What else did I get? Hi, love. Thanks for logging on, baby. Um, I got the Tamba. So shout out to Kimber. In um, thank you, Kimber uh, is a is in charge of the Esthetician Mall. She stopped by my booth and actually came to my booth to give me a Tamba. I bought it from her. Um, she uh, is is and this is the Sonic facial brush. So I, I'm very interested because you only have to charge it every four months and it's taking the place of the Clairsonics because we don't have to worry about brushing and it, I can clean it. So this is a Tamba. I'm going to probably try to use this in a periscope and then let you guys know what my thoughts are on it and then I'm going to use it on my folks. But I'm very excited about this and I guess she sells it for $39 or $49 and don't quote me but you know I she came to the booth. So Angela and I got one, Chuck got one, Miss Leslie who was there got one to and we were able to try it so it's called the sonic facial brush is by tamba um and one charge lasts up to four months so it's the tamba so this was a good pool as well and then i don't know if you guys have ever heard of the wap wapperoo so um just imagine i'm sending hearts continuously oh baby the um I got this wrapperoo. This is for hair. So it's a towel that velcros so you can walk around. And it also turns into a cape when you want to comb out your hair. I love this thing. So yeah, when I wash my hair, yeah. And it's for and this is actually the owner. She's so cute. Her dad was working the booth yesterday at the show and I got to meet him too. And this was on the hair side. So I can't wait to try my wrapperoo and give a review of that for her too. So I got a lot of good pulls. You know, my PCA hasn't come in. So I got some PCA. Um, what else did I get? I got a whole bunch of stuff. So anyway, let's talk about, um, and I want to thank everybody who was in Chicago who came to the booth and had conversations with me. We had a great time in Chicago. Um, yes, we had a wonderful time. We had a great class. I actually got two African American women that were able and let me get on camera. They both had curl patterns. Um, they both had a lot of hair. So I got in there with Coco and Diva and Seven and we worked it out. And it's so funny that I, I love doing shows and I love doing classes and stuff. And when people see how I work, they kind of don't really understand until they see it for themselves. Then it's like a whole different ball game when they're like, dang, you're not playing. No, because this is about making money. And I want to use a wax that's going to allow me to do that. I also want to, don't want to take a whole lot of time at it either. I can't fight with waxing. I just can't. I can't fight with my waxes. But um, the reason I came up with this topic today is when, you know, when it's time for you to go solo, when you know it's time to go solo. As I got a lot of estheticians over the last three days who just say they have no control or choice in what they use on their clients. And I've never been a fan of working for someone longer than a year. So if you've been with your same employer for a year, what exactly is it that you're expecting to do? My whole understanding in my year, and I gave myself a year, is I wanted to learn the ins and outs. I wanted to learn how to retail. I wanted to learn how to move my clients in and out. I wanted to be able to rebook them. I wanted to get understanding on how long it takes me to clean up my room. I wanted to understand how I can be on the sales floor, how I can you know, upgrade my, my services, how I can sell really well in multiple different things. I really wanted to work on that under someone else's dime. So when I went out on my own, I had it already down. So those of you guys who have been with your employer for a year Longer and your employer is, you know, providing and telling you, you have to use these products and you have to use this wax and you have to do these things. For me, I was never in the position or the mindset to be there longer than a year. 
Because again, I make really good money because I work on my own. And I think there's a 50% of fear and then there's a 50% of just being nervous about being responsible, you know? So it's, it's, um, we're already doing a block party. You feel sorry for my children. I don't have children. I have a child, but whatever block party. Um, so it's really about understanding that if you want to make good money, if you want to be a six figure esthetician, six figure estheticians don't work for other people. They don't have a boss. They're their own boss. And I've been saying this for a long, long time. Um, six figure estheticians work on their own. So if you even want to get to be a five-figure consistent esthetician, you're going to be solo. You're not going to be working for anyone. And I and I really feel that when people say, you know, the waxes I'm using don't work or the skincare that I'm using, I don't like it or my clients can buy it online, but my boss won't change it. I don't have any buying power. I kept hearing that this weekend. I don't have any buying power. I don't have any choice in what I use. And I keep thinking and I want to tell them while I'm looking at them, like, why would you allow someone else to choose how you are successful? You're allowing them to choose your success. Because if you're not successful with what you're using, why, you know, I, it's hard for me to give my success to someone else and expect them to allow me to be successful when that's not how it works in our world. Your success comes from your hustle, what you do, how you provide for yourself, how you market yourself. All of those things come from yourself. It can't come from someone else. So if, if you're on the fence about going solo and you've been with your employer more than a year, and I'm, I'm going to give it to you real talk today, it's time for you to go on your own. It just is. And if you're scared to do that, then that's fine. Do it scared. But you can't, you can't straddle the fence. You can't complain that you're not making the kind of money you want to make, but at the same time, you're comfortable at where you are. And that's something that you know, I, I've, I've never been comfortable. I'm always wanting to achieve more. And I know the only way I can do it is if I'm on my own. I can't do it underneath someone else. Oh, thank you, Anne. The, the key for me has always been if I want to be and do and live the way I live now and make my own schedule and, you know, make as much money as I can. It, will, it was never with the intention of working for someone in that way. It never is. And, you know, uh, the esthetician mentor has her program, the six figure esthetician, and she, she bases it off of being a solo SD. It's not really you working for someone. That's not the, really the understanding. And I've understand that a long time ago. It's just getting to that point where, you know, it's time to go. Now, am I saying that you're going to jump ship from working for someone all these years? And then all of a sudden you want to go on your own. No, 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 no. There's a transition. But are you putting yourself in the place to have the transition available? Are you looking for space? Are you... You know, you agree, you learned your worth this weekend. Awesome. Are you looking for your space? Are you deciding how you want to run your business? Do you have a business name? Can you rent a room? Can you share a room with the massage therapist? And that's what a lot of, I, I find in the Midwest, a lot more than out here, um, that people or estheticians are willing to go and, and rent or share their room with a non-competing practitioner, which I think is awesome. But are you willing to even do that? You know, it, it, it has to take a huge effort from you in order to get the kind of money and the kind of time that you want. You got to do it. I, I would never let someone just tell me that they're never going to listen to me when I'm telling them this is not working. And then they come back and say, well, that's OK. You know, suck it up. I'm paying for it. So you have to keep doing it. I would never I couldn't work for someone like that. Or if I'm using a wax and it's not working or is lifting skin, or is causing irritation, and yet I'm steady lifting skin, you know, day after day or week after week. I'm, I, mm, because the success comes back to me and my name. Yeah, you may work for the company, but your name, once you go solo, you gotta preserve your name. And I think that's one thing I did really, really well, is that I preserved my name so that way I wasn't associated with some jankiness. I wasn't associated with someone or owner who wouldn't listen to me or who would not nourish my aesthetic career. But on the flip side, owners are not there to nourish your career. They're in there to make money. They could care less, to be honest. So I got to care less too and make sure I take care of my bottom line. And there's a lot of you guys who are on the fence. You know, you've been there too long. You know, the boss has taken advantage. You've gotten comfortable because being a solo SD is very uncomfortable. 
It's very uncomfortable. Sometimes it can be downright frustrating. Sometimes it can be downright like, I don't even want to do this no more. I want to cry. I I'm tired. I don't know what to do. That's normal. That's normal. But if you're there and you're ready to take that step, please, please take it. It will be the best step you ever take. I'm telling you. And I, I have seen it in the last, I've been an esthetician now 13 years, going on 14 years. And it's the same story with a lot of estheticians that get stuck in that cycle of working for someone. The minute you go solo, you will never, ever, ever go back to working for someone. And, and, and again, the transition doesn't have to be one or the other. You can do it gradual. You can really do it very gradual. But you got to start it. If you want to be that six-figure esthetician, you got to do it. You just have to. And the other key to that, too, is that if you have your mindset right, because I find when I talk to a lot of you guys, some of you guys just don't have the right mentality at the moment. Um, I got a lot of stuff going on in my life. You know, I have my set clients. They're very comfortable with me. They know where I'm at. I don't have to hustle and try to, you know, remind them I have a system. Yes, but you also have no freedom. You have no place to have any kind of aesthetic expression or a aesthetic signature, which is what I call. You're not allowed to have a signature in anything that you do. And how long are you going to allow not having a signature? How long are you okay with that? Because if it's longer than a year, why? The other part of it is then when is it going to be too much? I think I had a conversation with someone and she was at our booth for a long time. And she kept walking around, looking at the waxes, looking at her skincare, looking at her products. And she just said, you know, I have no buying power. I really could never use this at where I work. And I just kept asking, well, why would I? Mm. So I'm going to have someone who typically doesn't do what I do, make the decisions on what I use and how I'm successful. Mm. No, I'm good. I couldn't do it. I would be so frustrated beyond the typical frustration because again I don't want to be limited I think the whole idea and I listened today to my periscope that I did last year about throw away your menu um, I listened to that again on the way home from the airport and I was it, it is true a lot of us are so scared at rejection or clients not coming with us or clients not coming back that we give way more than we should ever give truly and that goes for our employers to the owners too. Your owners, we give way more because they know that we have that nurturing side. We want our clients to get the best that they could in the time that they spend with us. So we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that we're doing that, even at our own expense. And I, I've, yeah, I always say 12 months, 12 months. After 12 months, it's time for me to get on my bandwagon and get my show on the road. If it's longer than that, it is harder for you. It's hard to know you can't please everyone. Absolutely. And I don't. I, I, I stopped that a long time ago. Um, and it's not about pleasing. It's more of understanding that this is exactly what I can do for you in this way, in this manner. And I think here's here's the thing where, you know, and, and, and again, if you've never seen me at a show, if you've never taken any of my classes um, online or in person, I'm very straight from the gut. I, I, I talk to you because I like sharing and enjoying seeing people's success. I like sharing my pitfalls that I've done in my business career. Um, I like to share my pitfalls I've done as an esthetician, too, because I've done quite a bit. But I like to really share knowledge without the expectation of something coming back. Like this is my way of giving back to my success that I've had. I hope that makes sense. So I do my Tuesday nights and not, and I'm not doing it in, in, in hopes of you're going to be, you know, becoming, you know, business partners with me or, you know, buying my products. I don't really, if you notice, I don't really do too many periscopes that have to do with products. I'm doing periscopes that have to do with my aesthetic life lessons what I see is happening in the industry and how I have made my empire the way it is based off of the experiences that I have had as an esthetician. 
So that's kind of why I do it. And the topics that I choose typically come to me 10 or 15 minutes before I do it. You're welcome, Don. Um, and it's usually based off of the environment or questions that I get. But this weekend, that was so evident to me that a lot of estheticians, it's time to go solo. It's time to make the money you want and have the schedule you need for your family, your sanity, and yourself. It's time. You know, you sticking behind and looking around at stuff and you can't buy it because you know your your own oh, your boss won't use it. I'm good. And then on the flip side, because I got to say this, there was five I, that I can remember off the top of my head, five owners that actually came. One of them had her phone texting to her esthetician telling us what to ship to her um, that were on the opposite end that were there. My esthetician cold told me to do that. You quit your DOD job of eight years to open your studio last November. Thanks to you. Awesome, Dee Dee. I'm so happy for you. Um, but we had five, five true owners that were there buying their products for their estheticians or sending their estheticians or their esthetician came to the class or they were an owner that's always been with us, but they come over and they said, my esthetician loves your products. I'm going to buy it. We've been successful. Like, and that was such a small ratio, five, you know, five owners that came over to buy for their staff. And it's sad and, and it disheartens me because the estheticians that were suffering and you should, and, and, and when I say suffer, I had that I can remember off the top of my head, at least two or three that just stared at our wax bar. Like, I wish I could use these. I wish I could be successful. I wish I could use them like you use them. And I'm like, I think I would be devastated if I could not have the tools to be successful. Now, don't get me wrong. When I worked for someone for my first year out as an esthetician, I used crap wax. That's true. At the same time, I knew I wasn't going to change the minds because I worked for a company. It was, a, you know, across the U.S. So it was a multi-chain company. So I knew I wasn't going to be able to change anybody's mind. But I knew then that I wasn't going to use that or that or that, you know, because I had three. And I was like, I ain't ever going to use this mess again. You know, the wax balled up and, and uh, uh, nope, not going to do it. High stink. So, you know, I really, uh-uh, I really wanted to get those lessons on someone else's dime. So when I did go out on my own, I got the best wax. You know, I got my derma sound. I got my LED. I got everything that I need to be to, to really truly be successful because I understood what I didn't want. But even us SDs who are still working for people, you're not even looking at it in that way. You're in monotone zone where you're just going in and, and coming out. Oh, Dee Dee, Dee Dee, thank you, honey. But yeah, you go in, you go out. That's it. You see your folks, you go home. You're not taking any keys about business or services or products to take with you. Nope. You're just, you're, you're, you're in the monotone zone. You're just going. You're just in the robot zone. This is the time for you to learn. It's on their dime. It's their clients. This is your time to get all of that stuff out. It really is. So I hope I'm talking to some of you guys today who are really truly on the fence because you can't stay on that fence forever. And if you're broke on the fence, that should be more motivation than anything else. Oh, honey, I hope I am. You're welcome. You can't. You can't be on the fence and be broke. And then I hear, I hear all the time, too, well, you know, I'm not making the kind of money that I want to make. Well, then what are you going to do about it? Are you just going to tell me or just talk to me or just send me a message about it? Or are you actually going to put some action behind it and do something about it? And if you've been saying that for more than one year or more than two years, it's more you than the owner. So I need you to get your thoughts together to make yourself successful. Success always comes from how hard you hustle, how hard you work. Success never falls into your lap. Never. And I love the way that I have had so many different experiences. You're renting out a hair salon, but would love to work in an esthetician environment more relaxing. So good. That's your motivation. So get your base for your people and then move that. So when you do decide to go, you have a base to go to support you when you go. But work the hair salon as much as you can, honey. Work it, work it, work it. And that's a great environment too. To, an, to a point, because I know it can be loud. It's not that relaxing and, and all of that. But work it as much as you can. 
till you're like, you know what, I'm good. I have enough clientele. I can go rent a small room or I can go, you know, I've always had this conversation too. You can rent solar rooms in medical buildings. They have solar rooms. It's a great thing to do or an existing, you know, chiropractor. That's a great, you know, that massage location. You know, me, I had my businesses in tanning salons. I did too. That was great for me. I had no competition at all. Nobody was coming there working out and looking and worry about nothing. It was straight, uh. So really get outside of the box when you're talking about going on your own and putting yourself in a place where people are going to notice that you're there. Obviously, me being in a tan salon and being black, that's already going to be, you know, people going to notice. Most places won't let you take the clients with you non-competes. It's not about taking clients with me. No. Um, the girl who's Hadley, she's in one my boot camp right now. She is a contractor in a salon, so that is her clients. Um, but the uh, those are her clients, so she can take those clients when she leaves. So she's an independent contractor, so yeah, she can. Um, in most non-competes, you can't give me a non-compete and be an independent. It doesn't kind of work like that. Typically, that works with employers. And if someone wants to try to give me a non-compete and I'm an independent, then I, I don't, it's null and void. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, I, 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 yeah. There's lots of things that you can do to transition yourself, to allow yourself to have clientele that will support your business. You just have to put those steps into place. And I think that's where a lot of us get stuck. When I knew I was not going to be working for the company, well, okay, so let's, let's get real talk. So when I knew I was going to be leaving my job and going into, um, I left my aesthetic job full time to go to a rep. And then from the rep, I went back and opened my own room. So from the job that I moved to becoming a rep, they pissed me off. I was making them a lot of money. They didn't want to give me any, you know, thing. I went and I got the interview, the products that I were already using. So it was easy, you know, and that was a great transition. I made enough money to be able to even go solo and do that part-time and do the rep part-time. So I did that for a, a while until my clientele built and then I left the skincare rep go. So I had a transition, but I had an exit plan. You know, I knew I wasn't going to be there for a year, but even before the year was up, I asked them, I'm making you a lot of money. Can I get two, three, four, five percent on the retail? And they're like, oh, no, we'll go and fly you to the Dermalogica Institute. You can make Jean, Jane Werwand. You can go and stay with her and da, 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 da. That, that, that. I want money. I'm making you money. Flying me down there is not, I don't, that's not what I want. I want to be rewarded for the amount of money that I'm making you because I'm making you a lot of money. I mean, yes, I made a lot of money, but I'm still making you a lot more. And when they said no, I was just kind of like, well, that makes my decision even more easier. So this is what's going to get down. I'm going to transition out. And then Stephanie was still there at that time. She stayed for a little bit and then she actually left too. And the two Stephanies were gone. So, you know, it's really getting an understanding to have a plan. And once you know you're, there's a plan in place and you're putting things in action to make that plan come true, then there's nothing stopping you. A lot of, of us don't have a plan. We don't plan. I like to plan. I like to have a plan B. I'm always going to have a plan B. Plan A doesn't work. We got plan B. And it's still going to benefit me. But getting back to, you know, wanting, if you're wanting to be a six-figure esthetician and you, you know, you're seeing things about it and you're, you know, wanting to see all the, you see all these successful estheticians. And that's the thing that I think we don't talk about a lot. The successful estheticians are solo estes. You didn't have any clients either. You're slowly building. You went from none to 10. And, exactly. 10 clients. Exactly. So if you don't have, you know, that understanding of how to transition and how to get yourself in that mindset you can it will it, it, it'll get there you just got to make up your mind okay i've been here enough it's time for me to go i'm gonna start putting some plans into place and this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna try to find you know get a business name i'm gonna research what i want to do do i want to be a clinical esthetician do i want to be a waxing only esthetician do i want to be a sugaring only esthetician i mean this is what i'm going to do how much do i want to pay in rent how do I want to advertise to my people? You know, all of those things you can do without having to put money into it from the beginning. Those are things that you can do at home in your notebook, you know, to get your, your business plan together. It doesn't have to mean you have to go out and spend money on that. No. You know, and I think that's the thing where a lot of us who, who work for people, we think there's a whole bunch of money involved to jump in. Yes, there is eventually. But to get started, there is no money involved. It's a mindset. How are you changing your mindset to get you into that position to start working on those things? 
Are you thinking about that? Or are you just kind of like, yeah, you know, one day it's going to happen. One day I'm going to be on my own. One day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to... When is one day coming? That's my favorite question that I love to ask when I hear people say, yeah, one day. Well, when is one day coming? Is one day soon? Was one day yesterday for you? I think it was yesterday. Give me some action. You know, when is it, when is it going to change? But... How do you get info in my classes? StephanieLanes.com. You can go to my website, and that is for my online classes. Like I said, we have boot camp starting April 1st. I'm in a boot camp now. I have the Skincare Mastermind, which will start June 1st. We're in an early bird session. So if you're looking to revamp, help with your marketing, yes, one day in Never Neverland, exactly. Um, helping with your marketing, if you're needing help with your skincare menu, and a lot of us do, that's the course for you. So right now I'm doing my waxing mastermind. And those of you who are in my waxing mastermind, we have a periscope tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock. I will remind you tonight. Um, but for help with skincare, marketing, and your menu, that online class starts June 1st. And we're in early bird. And if you know me about early bird, thank you. If you know me about early bird, you get a discount until a certain date and then it goes up. My live mastermind class, we talked to a lot of people about that. It's going to be in Dallas, Texas. It will be August 7th and 8th. I would love to see you guys. We already have people registered. There is a hotel um, link for you for discount. Some people are actually um, in my Smooth Skin Supply Wax Chat group already talking to each other about sharing rooms so they can split the cost of the hotel room. So if you're interested in going, let me know or let, yes, Tiffany, honey, let me know or call my office and we do have people who are um, seeking out roommates. So I I might even do a, a private group just for the master class. So in case people are looking for roommates or they want to share hotel costs, um, I think I'm going to put that together and I need to put that on my things of list to do. So I, I try to get that done this weekend for the master class. So those who are going or who are interested in going, um, you guys can chat with each other and get you know hooked up for a roommate situation. That way you can cut the cost for your hotel. So yeah, so we have lots of stuff that's going on and you know I, I'm super excited. We will be talking about a lot of this stuff at the master class. So not only will I be demoing, um, I will also be uh, uh, discussing a lot of stuff that has to do with business and aesthetics, has to do with your menu. How are you communicating with your people on a regular basis? Some of you guys' menus, I see them and they're confusing. Um, I think I did that Periscope, what, two Periscopes ago about how you confuse your customers? You do too much. They don't need to know definitions. All they need to know is how long it is and how much it costs. That's it. So everything else beyond that, you're doing too much. Keep it simple for them, okay? It needs to be one page. That's it. That's all it needs to be. So when you have a lot of plans but have no action, I'm here to call in the action. <laughs> Give me some action. Show me what you're doing. Put your mouth, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Start talking and start doing because if you're, if you're not in that place where you know you could be doing more for yourself, why are you waiting? What are you waiting for? Who are you waiting for? You have to do it. You have to make the decision. You have to put the plan of action together. No one can do it for you. No one can do it for you. And, and the thing is, and that there's some girls in here who have taken my mastermind class. You know, they, they know I come real. I, I'm not going to sugarcoat a lot of stuff to you. But at the same time, I'm doing it so that you can get out of that comfort zone. Too many of you guys are in your comfort zone. And that comfort zone is strangling you. Not only is the comfort zone strangling you, the comfort, don't, comfort zone is going to mess around and have you there four, five, six, seven, eight years because you're comfortable or you're tolerating it. You know, Tiffany had um, came on and we had talked on Facebook and she had shared with me a successful day that she's had because she's changed her mindset in how she looks at her business. It's easy when you work for someone, you do your appointment. Okay, I got an appointment this time, this time, this time. I have this many people today. Um, you know, I have a long day. This is how I'm going to do it. Versus when you work for yourself and you start saying, okay, everyone that works into my door is an opportunity, not only for retail and rebook, but also for advertising. So every single person, I have to talk to them in those three different ways. We don't do that when you work for someone else. When you work for yourself, you do that. But some of us don't even know how to do that. Some of us don't even understand that. 
And that's why, you know, when Tiffany was sharing with me her success and I told her, see, it's all you have to do is ask. You have to put the intention out there and give your clients the information. That's it. Once they have the information, then you discuss with them the plan of action, where they're going to go, what they're going to do. But if they don't have that option with you, they're not going to do it. And that's with anything, whether it's retail, whether it's rebook, whether it's, you know, services, whether it's telling their friends and family, any of that. If you don't make those options available, then they're not going to make the decisions. Simplify your menu. So you want to, <laughs> you want to shout from the rooftops. Absolutely. Especially when you get that money at the end of the day. You know, I told Tiffany, I had looked at her menu and I don't know if she, she knows this, but I knew she was going to be like, really? When I, when I responded back to her menu, I was like, Tiffany, it's too much. Pare it down for me. Give it slipfully. Make that bigger. Make that stand out. I know she was like this heifer right here. No, it wasn't about me, you know, trying to, to No, I was trying to get you to understand. I'm coming to you from your client's point of view. I want you to make it very simple. Simplify it for me. Don't think of it as an esthetician. Think of it as your client. And she's right. She said, yeah, she was mad at me and it worked. Yes, she was irritated. Absolutely. Most of my students in my class are irritated with me when I start talking about menu because you know why? Because that's our baby. She shouldn't be talking about what I do. That's my work. She shouldn't be telling me that it's wrong. She shouldn't be telling me how to change it. Actually, I should because what you're doing isn't working. So let me show you how I can get it to work for you. And this is what I'm going to tell you to do. You know, shorten that. I don't need five sentences to describe what the service is. You don't need that. Tell me how long it is. <laughs> she said, I do whatever Stephanie says now. <laughs> I love that. But I told her, I was like, Tiffany, give me, where are you located? I think that was the theme, the theme of my boot camp. Yes, don't get offended, but I asked her a hundred times, Tiffany, on all of your product and your, 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 your information, where are you? How can I get a hold of you? That has to be on every single thing you give to me. It's not personal. Absolutely, 150% is business. But if I can't find you and I can't call you or I can't email you, why are you advertising to me then? And I got this like, oh, Everything you put on social media, in your email, or where you have in your business, I have to know how to connect with you. So it should have your phone number. It should have your email address. Have your location. Because your clients take it to people who don't live there. And she was like, okay, all right, I'm going to change it. You know, and it was funny because I, I could I could tell she was like, this, this, this is not what I signed up for. I didn't sign up for someone to critique what I'm doing. No, actually you did. You just didn't know it. Yes, you doubted Twitter. She was another one that fought me on doing Twitter. And I keep telling you, Twitter will get you people. Twitter will get you noticed. And she kept saying, I don't need Twitter. I have Twitter and I don't need to link it. I don't need to do this. I don't need to do that. Okay, we'll do it and then see what happens. She did it and look what happens. So we fight. We fight, especially when we, when we have a certain thing that we have in our mind and we want to do it the way we want to do it. We have a vision of how it should look. And then I come along and give you that mirror and say, look, honey, it's not working. Okay. You can be busy if you do this, 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 because what you're doing isn't working. And I'm going to tell you it's not working, and I'm going to tell you why. Your menu should not have 15 colors in it. I need it to be plain. I need to be half page, and I don't need any descriptions. Tell me how to find you, how long it's going to take, and how much it costs. That's it. That's all I want. And then you get the private message. Thank you so much. <laughs> But we don't talk about this as estheticians. When you become solo, we don't talk about menus. We don't talk about marketing. We don't talk about plans. We don't talk about any of that stuff. All we talk about is services, what we can do for our customers, what's the best product, what product do you like, what product do you like. We don't ever get down to the nitty gritty of it, of how to get people in the room, how to get money in your hand. I'm that person. I want to talk that Tiffany said before she took the class, she was twiddling her thumbs in her shop. Now she's busy every day. And you know, it's funny with Tiffany, just like, you know, Angela logged on. Thanks Angela for logging on. You know, we tired, but Angela and I met very much the same way. She fought me tooth and nail until I finally told her I'm here to make you money. Let's make some money. She started making money and now we're the best of friends. It comes down to having a mirror like myself. And I'm really going to push you to the point where you are going to be successful. So you either partner with me or you don't. 
or you watch other success stories. So on my stephanielanes.com website, I do, Tiffany has her success story on there. Is it on there, Tiffany? Oh, or did I put it on Facebook? I need to check. But her success story is on there. I also sent out an, in an email blast. She gave her success story for that. But I have all of my students who are in my mastermind classes and boot camps who are giving success stories as to how I've helped them. And that's the key. It's understanding how you can do so much more if you had the right keys in place. You just need someone to help you. That's it. Even if you're on the fence about solo. You just need the keys to help you. And I'm telling you, it's time to go. If you've been there 12 months or longer, it's time to go. There's nothing to even discuss or think about. Now, after tonight, it's time for you to get your journal and start planning how you're going to transition from working to solo. And that transition may be shorter for some and longer for others. However, start that process. Start it. And once you on it and you start looking at it from a different point of view, you'll be like, well, okay, I'm ready for this. I'm ready to get started on six figures. Six figures doesn't happen overnight and doesn't happen in a year, but I'm going to be on my way to it so I can get it sooner rather than later. So I'm coming real talk today. I'm, I'm, I'm coming real talk today because I found it so disheartening at a lot of estheticians who just kept saying, you know, I don't have any buying power. I don't have any buying power. I can't decide what I'm going to use to be successful. I, I, I just, I can't stomach that. It's hard for me to stomach that because I think some of you guys do know you could be so much more successful and you could have so much more if you just kind of got off the fence and said, it's time for me to transition out. And on my own. And the ones that you see, and you know, I had pictures this weekend with Diana um, of the brow teeth. You know, she does my brows. I'm talking to her about microblading my brows. She says, I don't need it, but I want it. But, you know, I still need to go and get my brows done with her again. Anyway, very successful. She came to my show um, when I did a Chicago wax show which was three years ago, and she started talking then before her business really, really took off. She was booked, but she wasn't doing the right things. So I'm thankful for her, and I love the way she does brows. She's the owner of the Arch Addicts. If you're not following Arch Addicts on Instagram, um, her business is Angela, uh, uh, Diana, and uh, oh, what's the other one's name? I'm so sorry. There's three of them. I can't remember the other one's name. Oh, I feel bad. Um, but there's three of them. But I took pictures with Diana this weekend, so I'm trying to get her to talk about it. But she sent me information about the microblades. So I'm, I'm going to see. I want to get it done. I, I'm seeing about it. But, you know, Katie, who I've interviewed on my YouTube channel, Solo SD, same story. Um, Tiffany down in, in uh, Oklahoma City, same story. We all have the same story to success. It is all working for ourselves. It's not working for someone. I have yet to find someone who is a six-figure esthetician who gets everything that they need who works for someone. I've, I, I, have, I have yet to find that. It may be out there, but I've yet to find that esthetician. Because again, most people know once you get that taste of freedom, of decision-making on what your services you're going to offer, decision-making on what products you're going to offer, it's, you, you don't want to go anyplace else. You want to stay with your own, especially scheduling. I think that was the biggest thing for me that I loved is that my schedule, I made up my schedule. If I only want to work two days a week this week and go on vacation, I still had it all planned out. If I wanted to work three days next week, you know, it's definitely a new world. It's a whole different ball game. It kind of reminds you of the reason why you became an esthetician. You wanted that freedom. You wanted to be able to command and make the kind of money you were promised in school to make. You get that understanding. Just like I tell people, I will never go back to corporate America. I can't. I've been off on my own too long. I, I love the freedom that I have. I can't go back to an office nine to five. I just can't. Angela and I had a great conversation about that this weekend. She went back to nine to five because circumstances went there and the damn near suffocated her. And so she's back out doing what we do well. She's thriving now at doing what she does best. And it's hard because sometimes, oh, Rhonda, you're working, you love working three days because of me. Oh, see now Rhonda, yeah, see Rhonda, that's another Rhonda came to the booth, took pictures with me as well. And Rhonda has taken my classes and she has met with me and I told her a long time ago, gone the days sitting in your room for five days. You can't do that. You got to work smarter, not harder. Get those people in them three days, book them. They don't need to know what you're doing the other time. Okay. 
The problem with a lot of us is, is that we want to be on our client's beck and call. But instead of, you know, hurting them to where they, where you are, you go to them. Oh, okay. You want to come by and see me? Okay. I'll meet you then. Okay. You want to see me? Okay. I'll meet you there. Uh, 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 uh. Are you in my Thursday, Friday, Saturday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday? Because those are the times that I'm available. I can give you the dates and times I'm available if you like, but I'm not available on Monday at five. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. And it's just that simple. You know, I'm not available on Monday at five. I'm not available Tuesday at two. You know, you're so excited. You just can't, you just graduated. You can't wait to start. You need your help. Oh, honey. Yeah, it's, it's fun. I think for me, it's always been the, the, I want to have a great schedule. I want to have flexibility. I want to be able to raise my daughter. If you've never heard my story on my YouTube channel, um, during the wax class, I explain how I started my business. Um, I always wanted to have flexibility with her. You know, if I need to be a mom at school, or if I needed to be a dance mom or whatever, I have that flexibility. Um, I always wanted to be able to not have to choose what I was going to work over family time. Like that was kind of my motivation. The other part of it too is I want to be able to make as much money as I can while I'm working at the same time. So that means if I'm working six hours, I want to see 12 to 15 people. I'm not going to work six hours to see five or three. I can't. That's not how my time is spent. So, you know, really, you, you guys, your solos that are, you know, just new solos, understand it's going to be frustrating. You're going to want to cry. Um, that's normal. You SDs who are working for someone, if you've been there longer for a, a year and you're on the fence and you know, you feel that it's time to go. It's time to go. It's time to go. You're in that fork in the road between work and that, yes, work and family. <laughs> yep. And that's, you know, family should always take precedence. However, sometimes money will dictate some of our decisions. I think money dictates a lot of our decisions in what services we do, what products we offer, what we sell, uh, how often we're available, uh, whether or not we're going to divide our time with our family and our work. I think money drives a lot of it. Fear is the other one that's on the passenger side to the money. We're scared. We're scared that no one's going to come in next week. We're scared no one's going to come in tomorrow. We're scared we're not going to sell another product. We're scared that no one's going to know where we are or tell anybody what we do. I mean, uh, we're scared for a lot of things. And I, I never understood understood the fear. I was always, and I still do, wake up with intention. I don't know how much I'm going to make today, but I'm going to be grateful at how much I make today. I'm going to be pro able to provide for my child today. I don't need to worry about next week or the week after or next month. I'm able to provide for my daughter today. I'm able to bring home money today. I'm able to put gas in my car today. I'm able to go and buy groceries and food today. That's how you got to do it when you start off. It has to be every single day. Not, I got to look at my week. Oh, I'm not going to make any money this week. It can't be that way. You will drive yourself insane. You have to take it one day at a time. I'm making enough money to survive today. I'm making enough money to cover my bills today. I'm making enough money to provide food for my children today. We get to tomorrow. I'm doing enough money to provide for my family today. I'm doing enough so that I can pay my bills today. That's how you have to look at it. We don't look at it. We get panicked when we see five people on our books next week. Because some of you guys have looked even next week and the week after. I only have five people the week after. Oh my God. You know, the first is coming. I have rent due and I only have five people on the books. I got to take it one day at a time. And in that one day at a time, I'm a market to everyone. I'm going to talk to all the clients that come in. I'm going to rebook all the clients that come in. I'm going to have all of the retail in front of their face for everyone that comes in, whether they're getting a service or not. I'm going to market on social media. I'm going to do all of those things. You did that. And thanks to you, much better anxiety will kill you. Yes, it will. Yes, it will, Bree. It'll kill you too. But you know what? I, I said it. You've got to do daily, daily marketing, daily focus. It can't be weeks and months. You can't do that. You'll, you will. You'll stress yourself out and to be like, well, I need to go back and get a, you know, a real job. No, let's focus on today. Do I have enough money to pay the bills today? Yes. What can I do to make it so that I consistently have the same amount of money every day or even more that I pay myself? When I start, first started up as an SD, I wanted to pay myself, take home after I paid the bills, $100 a day. Okay? So, and that was before I started making really good money. My goal was to take home 100 a day. And then I bumped it up to 150. So 
you know, everything was taken care of. The bills were taken care of. The rent was taken care of. I still had money in the bank, but I'm going to take and pay myself $150 a day. Then from there, I went to 200 days. So you see my pattern that I'm, I'm trying to explain to you. So that money came home and it didn't sit in the bank. But I could actually take it home, put it deposit it in my account if I needed to, you know, put it in my tip jar if I needed to, or put it in my cash jar if I needed to. But I had money physically in my hands. That's how I needed to make myself be able to not stress out every day. I had to have some kind of cash that left the business, went into my pocket or my wallet, and then either went into my cash oh, went into my cash drawer or went into the bank. How much do I put aside daily for bills? You know, my bills are already matched out in the month. So basically what I did is, is I have a month and I still do. So I have everything. So we have our phone, we have our internet, we have, I don't know what kind of advertising that you do. You have your rent, um, you know, the four majors that are there. So what I do is basically save up enough money or keep it into the bank account to cover that. So once it's covered for the rent is covered, then I can go ahead and make the draw, you know, if it's $50 or $100, you know, the phone bill is going to do here. So I know it has to be 200. So I'm going to put 200 with the rent. So I'm not going to touch $1,200. I can't go below $1,200 if that makes sense. So I really budget to make sure that the bills are paid, but the money is sitting in the bank. Whatever is over can go with me. The, the thing with a lot of us, and unless we're on payroll, I pay myself weekly, but unless you're on payroll, if you're not on payroll, um, you're welcome, hon. If you're not on payroll and you are taking a draw and you need to have that uh, comfort for yourself, you really need to do a, a daily task. So if your daily task is to take on $50 a day, then that needs to be for you. If your daily task is to take $100 a day, then that needs to be for you, for you to keep your, your sanity. If you need that, that's how you're going to keep your sanity, then do it. For me in the very beginning, I needed to have money in my hand to go home so that I knew I had money. I needed to have it in my hands. That is how I stayed sane. Okay. My goal was $50 today. I got $50 in my hand. I still have money in the bank. Woo, I can go home. I got more busy. Okay, I can do $100 a day. Take it in my hand, put it in my wallet. I have it. Everyone has their own method. That was my method. That was my method. Um, and it kept, kept me sane up until I started, you know, doing payroll and payroll is easy now. So, you know, it's just there and, and it's direct deposit. So I don't even have to have it in my hands. It goes directly into my account. So I always have money. And I think that's the thing you sign up for a masterclass at stephanielanes.com. But I think a lot of us, that's our thing. We don't have a system of comfort with money to know that we're making money. Um, I think last month I threw out a challenge that you save your tips for the entire month and see how much money you make. Um, someone had actually sent me a message um, that they did that and they had so much more money than they ever even thought that they had, which was amazing to me because I'm like, that's the beginning. Um, I needed to have cash in my hand just to see in my mind I was successful. I, I just had to do that in order so I didn't freak out and freak everybody out. That was just my thing. Um, have I gotten over that? Absolutely. But at the same time, I needed that process to fuel me daily. That was my motivation every day. Okay. I get to take home $50 today. Okay. All right. I got my $50. Woo. You know, that was my daily goal. Absolutely. You will lose sleep, lose sleep, honey, go off. Look, drink, you know, go crazy because there is no goal. And for me, the $50 a day, absolutely eat too. $50 a day was easy for me, but at that time it was a struggle. So it was also a challenge. You know, then I went to $100 a day. Then I went to $250, you know, <laughs> five, you know, whatever. It became really, really, really a motivator for me to just say, Stephanie, you're okay. You're bringing money home. You have money in your jar. You have money in your account. You're okay. I had to see it. I, it had to be tangible for me. Once it became tangible for me, I, <sighs> I was not able, I, I wasn't stressing out anymore over it. But if you don't see your money daily, if you don't see it, if you don't think that you're bringing anything home, if it's not tangible for you to validate what you're doing, the stress is going to be there. So find a method. Your method may not be like my method, but find a method so that you can understand that you are making money. 
that you are doing okay, that you're going to take it one day at a time. Today, I'm going to make enough money. I'm going to make enough money to be able to provide for my family and my, you know, my children and have gas and pay my bills. Tomorrow, you get up and you're going to say the same thing. You got to have something that's going to keep you motivated every single day so that when you're, you know, when you're not seeing it in that way, it, it is, you know, don't lose sleep, take melatonin and a bath before bed. For me, I lost sleep, to be honest. I, I was just like, this ain't working. I need to figure this out real quick and in a hurry, you know, and that's when I got in trouble with credit cards. That's when I got in trouble with, you know, trying to balance and rob Peter to pay Paul and not realizing that I was making so much more money. I had so much cash going through my hands that I didn't realize that I, I am making money. I just don't see it because I'm not being smart with it. Today, you took a draw to buy all your groceries. Absolutely. But you know what? You made the money, you know? Let me make sure I'm running on time. Okay, good. I got 10 more minutes and we'll keep going. Um, but you made the money. And that's something that for me has always been a true um, contention is not only every day I want to get up and say that I'm making a certain amount of money, but I also want to make sure that I'm covering my bills. I was a big credit card user. Absolutely big, 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 big credit card user. Yes, there I go all in your business. <laughs> Big credit card user. It was easy for me to swipe it. Swipe it, swipe it, swipe it. I paid off the end of the month. Swipe it, swipe it, swipe it, swipe it, swipe it, swipe it. Oh, in the month. Oh, no, I can't pay you, honey. I got to pay this. And it really didn't dawn on me until I started seeing that I didn't have to swipe and if I would have paid it in cash or if I didn't even get it at all. If I would have bought smarter, if I would have spent my money smarter, if I would have understand that, you know, I need to buy when it was free shipping or buy when there was a quantity discount or buy, you know, I didn't think about that. I only bought because I knew I needed it. So if I needed only two cans, I was going to buy two cans and not realize I could buy six and not have to buy for two months. Or I could buy 12 of the item I know is going to sell and get a discount or get one free. I, I didn't think of things in that way because it just didn't dawn on me to do that. Oh, yes, honey. Yes, you may be getting out on your own sooner than planned. Absolutely. It's time. It's, it's time for a lot of you guys. You keep all cash tips so you can feel you're getting paid. Absolutely, honey. Yeah, you know, I love my cash. I love my cash. There's a conversation going around in one of the groups saying that I said something about cash. Um, and you're tired of working with grown children. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's real. Um, about how I talk about cash and the reason I went to cash is about uh, chargebacks. No, the reason I went to cash only was because my merchant processor that I was using at the time compromised every client that had ever swiped their card with me. So not only did they have to do an apology letter to each client, they made me post a letter saying that their cards had been compromised. I came to all my clients and said, I will never put you in that position again. Let's make it very simple. Bring cash. And that was in the very beginning when all this, you know, credit card scamming were starting. I didn't want to be responsible because my processor got hacked and, you know, leaked valuable information. I didn't even want to be a part of that anymore. So I'm like, I'm going to do cash. And every single client that I emailed, talked to about it, posted it in my business was like, thank you. I don't mind doing cash either. And it became a conversation starter. So no, so I want to make clarification. I think there's one of the groups that are saying that I said it was about chargebacks. And no, it's not about chargebacks. It was about that all of their information got leaked. And at that time, that was a good five or 600 um, uh, customers that their information, it, it was swiped. I think every swipe that happened in the last six to nine months that all their information was out. It was hacked into which looked horrible on them, but I couldn't control that. But at the same time, I told them I wouldn't, I don't ever want to be a reason why your card gets jacked or why you have to go through all the headaches you have to go through when your stuff gets stolen. And at that time, banks were as, you know, quick on fraud and stuff like that. So let's just go straight cash. Every last one agreed. I had one or two that wanted to write me a check and they had knew me. So I took their checks, but there, everybody else was like, oh my gosh, yeah, let's let's do that. I have no problem. Just remind me when you, you know, send me a message for my my appointment on how much cash I need to bring. And of course, you know, I padded it. So if your service was only 150, I said to bring 250 just in case you bought some products. You know. Yes, indeed, honey. Yes, indeed. So, yeah, it's been valuable for us to have this conversation because I think it's long overdue. Um, I'm thinking about next week going back to a money conversation. I'm trying to do money conversations at least once a month. Um, to really get you start thinking about how you look at money, how you spend money, how you make money. Um, and the last two conversations we've had about money have been very intense for some of you guys. You know, 
<laughs> yes. It's been intense for you guys because a lot of you guys have issues with money. Um, and in our mind, we think we're doing one thing and then on reality, on paper, we're doing a whole nother. So I think that's been real hard for some of you guys because I've had some of you reach out to me and said that's been great conversation, but it's been hard for me to realize what I'm doing with my money. So I think we're going to come back to that next week. I'm going to try to do a Periscope, uh, either Thursday from the office. We're going to talk about products. And all that good stuff. I know you guys who are in my, my chat group. I have not announced week two winner. I got to do week three. So I'll be busy tonight and tomorrow. Yes, honey. Thank you so much for coming to Chicago and coming to the class. Our class in Chicago was fabulous. It was standing room. I allowed people to come up to me who were way in the back and had to stand. They were able to come up and stand behind me. And you know when people stand behind me, they get so excited that they're this close. And all of that. I'm so glad I gave you life, hun. I have a great time. And I think part of it is, is that um, a lot of classes, and I've always said this, I want to do classes and take classes where I'm interested and I'm engaged. I don't want to be lectured to. And I've been to classes where I've sat there and been like, So it, it's it's awesome because I take exactly the way I'm talking to you now in a classroom setting. I'm going to hit the parts that we don't want to talk about. I talked about the whole glove situation where a lot of Estes aren't wearing gloves and I don't understand that. I talked about the reason why it's important to really understand ingredients and what it is that you're using and putting on the skin. I mean, I really go in with the aesthetic side and then, of course, the demos. And the thing is about demos for me, it's the way I've worked pretty much over 80% of my career. So the what you saw in the classes when waxing just those two ladies, just as easy as it is, that's how I work. But I don't work like how everyone else works either. And I had people to come to the booth and said they saw other classes and they took a lot longer on Brazilians. I had people come to the class or come to my booth and said that, you know, other people talk about the seven minute Brazilian technique. And this has always been my disclaimer. Not everyone is going to like the technique. Not everyone is going to do the technique. I'm not here to convince you to do it or not. All I'm here to do is show you a different way to be successful. You can choose it or you don't have to choose it. I'm all well and fine. You don't have to buy my waxes. You can be successful with the waxes you use. I just give you an option to be successful with the technique altogether. And I'm okay with that. And it's taken me a while to get okay with it. Because in the very beginning, I was upset that people were talking about what I was doing. Because I'm like, you're not doing it. So why would you talk about me? You know? But then I started thinking about it. You know, people don't understand what they don't know. And I think that's, for me, been a, a big a big situation and eye open for me. It's not necessarily me they're talking about. Sometimes it's a reflection of themselves and so they want to deflect it onto me. And people be like, oh, you know, and I've, I've got so many messages where people, someone so-and-so is talking about you. That's great because they're talking about me. They're giving me free press. Thanks. Um, I'm not here to convince you to do one way or another. All I'm here to do is just show you an alternative. Either you're intrigued by it and you want to learn more or you're kind of like, ah, I'm okay with what I'm doing. I'm going to do what I do. That's all well and good. I've never been one to force anything on anyone, but I am going to show you a difference. I don't wax like a lot of other people wax. Never have. I don't, um, I don't think like a lot of educators in our industry. I don't, I don't, I, I really come very real and exactly it's not wrong. It's very different, but it's mine. And I don't expect people to like it or not like it. It's not a like or like situation. It's really either you want to do it or you don't want to do it. And if you don't, that's all well and good. Um, this show, this past weekend, was the first show that I've done both hard and soft and all hard wax. So if you missed the class, I did an all hard wax demo when I started from the butt and went to the top. Um, and I typically, I only will do soft and hard, but this one, I've decided to open it up even more and show how Coco and Diva are fabulous just by themselves for people who just want to do all hard wax Brazilians. All hard wax Brazilians are more expensive. It is more costly to do it that way. Um, but some just want to do all hard wax, which is all well and good. But you know me, I like to do my soft and hard. So I showed from the top to the back and then I showed from the back to the front because there's different ways to do it. It's just giving you options. That's it. That's all I like to do. So I'm going to go ahead and sign off. I do have my green drink. I haven't been taking sips that much, um, but I'm excited about using my Tamba. Like I think I even may use this tonight. 
Like, I'm real excited. I, 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 I'm real excited. You tried your techniques on a bikini and it was awesome. Oh, great, Celia. Yes, honey. Yes, yes, yes. I'm so glad that was successful for you. Um, and, and Celia has taken my classes too. So when, you know, when I have institutions that chime in when I'm online and they're saying, you know, that the things are working, I love that. Because again, I'm just giving you options. You can choose to use it or you don't. But when most people see what I do, they they kind of look like, whoa, I don't get that kind of result. My wax doesn't do what that does. I think that's what I get most of the time. Or, you know, how did you get the stick trick? Do the stick trick again? Or um, why does your wax grab hair in multiple directions, but other waxes don't? Again, and I say plastic and not, but mine is non-plastic. Mine's a non-polymer. So non-polymers are a whole different world. So it opens you up to be... But yeah, I'm interested in, in seeing how this is going to go. Um, my, I'm going to tell my esthetician too. I may even bring it to her and let her use it on me too. So yeah, I'm excited about the Tamba. And again, shout out if you're not in her private group. Thank you, Dee Dee. Um, if you're not in uh, um, Kimber's private group, it's the esthetician mall. She's the one that, that uses the esthetician mall. Um, are all of my wax is non-polymer. No, um, Coco and Diva are non-polymer. Uh, violet's polymer, blue's polymer, pink is polymer. So violet is our most popular polymer wax, but I use non-polymer. The flexibility is so much bigger and I don't fight it and I love it. I've always loved Coco and Diva. Those are my babies. And I love Seven and Latte, but yeah, Coco and Diva are my babies. So I'm going to sign off because my little one has been popping in here. The website again for the training is stephanielanes.com to purchase um, buy wax. My Say Brazil Wax brand is www.ssmoothskinsupply. For Tamba, the website, no, the private group on Facebook for the for Kimber who sells these is the Esthetician Mall, and that's on Facebook. It's called the Esthetician Mall, and she sells these. She also sells the Ultrasonic Scrubber. I didn't get that because I still have my Dermasal, um, and I haven't tried because she has a handheld one. I haven't tried that yet, but I have been seeing her post about the Tambas and the other uh, cleansing cloths that she has, too. There's a there's a, a reusable sponges or cloth sponges that she uses. I can't remember what it is, but it, get in the group. Esthetician Mall. If you want to join me in my wax chat, is Smooth Skin Supply. That's where I'm giving away all of my weekly giveaways. So I got to pick a winner for last week. And then I got to put up what I'm giving away this week. I think a lot of people are going to like it because it's going to be, yeah, you got to get in the group to see what I'm giving away this week. And the drawing is going to be on Friday. And that's the Smooth Skin Supply Wax Chat group. And that's on Facebook. Okay. All right, guys, I'm going to sign off. I will try to log back on, I think, Thursday. I'm going to come back on and we're going to talk about the Very Well. Um, we got a lot of questions about Very Well. So I'm going to log back on and chat about that this week. Okay. All right. Have a good night. Bye.